guys, it's future Sarah here. As I was editing this video, I realized that we were having some major technical difficulties and I am not in focus for pretty much the entire video, but my husband is for the most part. So instead of reshooting it, we just decided to keep the video as it is. So hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to my page. Thank you so much for being here today. If you're new, my name is Sarah. I'm a Christian life coach and content creator, and this is my husband, Adam. Hey guys, I'm back again to join you. And if you're not new, then welcome back. Just wanted to take a moment to thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel, for liking these videos and for commenting. It really helps us out a lot. And for this video for today, do you want to announce the topic? <laughs> yeah, so my wife uh, came up with the idea of talking about peer pressures and temptations mm -hmm. and anything else that was... Yeah, that was it. It was basically just that I was looking at, I think it was Matthew chapter 4, where it was talking about Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, and then where the enemy was offering him, I'll, I can actually quote the scripture, but the enemy is offering him all this land, and then I was just thinking about as Christians how often that might happen to us, and it could be for like younger people listening who maybe they experience that in school. I know it's so cliche to say peer pressure, and then also even as like adults, I think we still can experience being pressured and also mm -hmm. temptation. I mean, it says in scripture that we will be tempted. So I thought maybe they could help some people out today. So I was gonna read Matthew 4, 1 to 11, and it's titled, The Temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up, in their hands so that you are so you will not strike your foot against the stone jesus answered him it is also written do not put your lord your god to the test again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the splendor all this i give to you he said if you bow down and worship me and jesus said to him away from me satan for it is written Worship the Lord your God and only serve him. And then the devil left and his angels came and attended him. Yeah, so I think just reading that scripture, it's just obvious that that clearly happened to Jesus. Jesus was being tempted and so obviously that's going to happen to us and does happen to us all the time. So I think just being mindful of the fact that the enemy, he doesn't just like show up the way that he showed up in the Bible where he where it was direct that he was the enemy, but he shows up through situations and through people. The Lord put that verse definitely on, on my wife's heart for us to break it down. And there's many ways we can break it down and I really just want to state the obvious and as you as you're reading that verse um, what stands out to me straight away is how the devil attacks us and what he does to attack us is this is it always starts by if you are the son of God if he always wants to cast doubt and that's a good observation to see how the enemy comes in it's like did he really say that? Are you really that person? Are you that uh, daughter of, of God? Are you a Christian? And it always starts with doubt. So that's a good observation that you're in a spiritual attack or you're about to get tempted if the enemy comes in and casts doubt over you. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. So the scripture that came to mind is Genesis 4 verse 7 and it says, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. What I hear from this is we have a choice. We have a good way and a bad way. And we've all been in them situations where sin comes knocking um, and then you have a choice. Do I follow sin or do I do what is actually it's hard, but to run away from sin? And God says many times, it's like flee flee from sin mm -hmm. and it's not like flee like get up and, and walk or crawl it's like get up and run in such a speed that you quickly leave that situation there's many times in my life where I made choice um, or I had the choice but I chose the wrong path and 
even f many things like uh, choosing to go out with friends and, and drink uh, back in my day and the consequence is what leads up to starts with one drink and then you wake up um, with so much regret and a hangover the next day. I feel like what kind of stands out is just the fact that it's not just it's not just like one big choice, it's the little choices that get us to that point. So it's like the thought that comes in. It's not like, oh, you know, a lot of things are not premeditated. I feel like they kind of slowly just happen and we compromise ourselves more or we just say like, oh, it's not a big deal. I'll date this person even though I don't feel led to or I'll go out with these people even though I don't feel that I should. Or And then it just slowly kind of turns into like a big mistake or a lifestyle. So I think just yeah just being cautious that it's not like it's just presented to you in this way generally that is so obvious that it's going to be sin or it's going to or it's going to harm you it can be something that seems very appealing just like it says in scripture about the enemy showing Jesus this land and all these kingdoms that he can have mm -hmm. and i i mean i feel like i've said this quote before and it's so overused but it's something like the devil doesn't show up wearing red with horns mm. um, he shows up as everything you've ever wanted and mm -hmm. I've seen that happen in my life so many times where I'm like this yeah. is tempting but this is not God um, it's very interesting to see that when Jesus is most hungry uh, it's when the devil come in to tempt him and it's the same in our lives like you know it's like you get back from work and you had a frustrating day or the finances are low or whatever it is that's beating you up is, is, is beating you up and then you just feel the temptation come in and that's happened in my life many times like I'd get back from work and there'd be like a frustration uh, something going on in my life and then you just hear the devil knocking at, knocking at your door like come on let's go let's go play kind of thing and whatever temptations He's like, come, come, come. It's like he wraps up this gift in something wonderful. And then, like, in the sins I bowed with, it's like I, I followed him at times. And it's like at the end of it, it's like after you commit the sin, it's like the devil says, like, ha ha, suck, I got you. And it's just like you're in like a downward spiral. And when you hit that downward place, um, it is... It's lonely and it's scary and it's like I bowed in that place of like suicidal or running away and escaping like packing up my car and driving somewhere all because I committed a sin and it's not just in self sin or probably all types of issues that are going on It's something that I, that encourages encourages encouraged me was um, in that times of loneliness when you have hit rock bottom in your life um, just remember that uh, the Lord is the rock and he's, at, he's down there with you and he's going to dust you off and he's going to clean you up and he's going to pick you up and he's going to raise you up. Jesus loves us and he's crazy about you and he's not going to leave you down in the gutter. He's going to wipe you off, pick you up and, and bring you back to him. So what I want to say is this, this, is this, this um, chapter, or sorry, this um, one to... 11 is I use anytime I feel like the devil is tempting me and I just say like I just use the writing in red what Jesus said um, for it's written man that can live on bread man cannot live on bread alone but every word that comes from the mouth of God and then I say it's also written do not put your Lord your God to your test and then I say um, away from me Satan for it's written worship the Lord your God and serve him only and I just really feel when I speak this scripture over me I sense the the devil flee uh, in that away from me Satan or in other in other translations get behind me Satan and I just really want to encourage you if you're in a place of temptation just speak um, these words that Jesus said here and the devil will flee from you yeah and then just to kind of switch gears a little bit so we're talking about temptation but then talking about peer pressure as well because I feel like that just kind of ties in together I just want to share like a really small and like silly example when I think about peer pressure just thinking about being in high school and mm -hmm. I just remember I was friends with this girl in high school she was like she wasn't popular people would actually say like they would just make fun of her behind her back and she was so sweet and I remember she asked me to hang out so I hung out with her she's so nice like we had a great time hanging out and she's just so sweet and then 
uh, some of my friends were like kind of like making fun of the fact that I mean they weren't like my close friends but kind of like my circle of friends in high school kind of like made a joke about her and like made a joke about me hanging out with her and in that moment I because of just like fear of what people thought of me I didn't stand up for her or I didn't like I didn't say like what are you guys talking about she's so cool she's so nice I like hanging out with her I kind of just like went along with what they were saying as if like oh yeah I don't even know why I hung out with her like something like that and when I look back on it I mean she doesn't know but when I look back on it I'm like that's just so sad that I allowed other people's cruelness or just like what, yeah their opinion to to really affect me to that capacity and the scripture that comes to mind for me is talking about not conforming to the world but being transformed by the renewing of your mind and then the other scripture that comes up is from Galatians 1 verse 10 where it says am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God or am I trying to please people if I was we're still trying to please people I would not be a servant of Christ so I know it's really difficult in the moment like I don't know how I would be able to at that time in my life I wasn't walking with the Lord and even if I was I didn't know who I was and I just had so much fear of what other people thought and wanted to be accepted and that's what so many of us struggle with we just we want to be accepted we want to be in that circle of friends or we want to we want people to think we're pretty or popular or cool or that guy or that girl to like us and that still happens as an adult when it happens in, in happens in high school and elementary school but it also happens as an adult in different ways that we don't even realize so I know that it's really really difficult in the moment but I think the more that we can it sounds it's not as simple as this but the more that we can focus on who we are and that we don't need to be like the world we don't need to try to conform to what other people are doing especially well especially if it's hurting other people yeah that's so good and and it just, just reminds me now is that um, to truly know ourselves is we must know God because God created us it's like if I have a, a, a watch and I and I I don't know what, how it's made, I don't know exactly how it works, but until I meet the, the person who made the watch, and then they can break it down for me is they take the back of the watch off, they can describe it, they can show me how um, mechanisms come together for the watch to work. And so to truly know ourselves is to know God, right? So as my wife was saying just now is, yeah, we've done so many dumb things, so many peer pressure things that we wish we could turn back time and, and do the opposite. and. It's just because we didn't know ourselves, because we didn't know God. Mm -hmm. And as you grow with God, uh, you know yourself. And just also have some forgiveness towards yourself. And like, I've done so many stupid things and let people down and uh, been a bully at times. Um, from being getting bullied to being a bully, um, you know, I regret that stuff. Just have patience for yourself and, and, and know to grow, the closer you grow with Him, the the more you know yourself. So I think that some practical steps are some things to just be mindful of so that we don't end up in these situations as much. I mean, the thing is, is it's life and we're always going to have temptations, but we can be in control of the environments that we put ourselves in and the choices that we make that lead up to these things. So I just wanted to share an example with you guys because for some reason this entire video, the thing that kept coming up to me was an area in my life that I struggled with and this was before I was walking with the Lord, um, but basically I struggled with cheating, like cheating in a relationship. And leading up to it, I just know that the decisions that I made, like I let the enemy in. And I mean, and I wasn't walking as a Christian, so obviously I'm not going to make the same decisions that I would now of not putting myself in any of those situations. But at the time, it was it was like the drinking, the going out, the putting myself in those scenarios. And even just starting with like, oh, it's just a friend, or they're just friendly, or they're just nice, but you, deep down, you know that you shouldn't be hanging out with this person. Like, just to share an example, it's like catching it before you start to make those next steps. And then just to take it like another level deeper, because I feel like it's good to share practical steps and all that. But for me, what really comes to me is the root of like, why we are desiring these things in the first place like why why is there a stronghold in this area of our life that maybe we're susceptible to like i need that person to accept me when it comes to peer pressure or like i need that friend group to accept me i need to be accepted or i need people to think i'm pretty or i need that guy to desire me 
And I think that that's very important to address where the root of it is actually coming from because I mean, we yes, of course, we have to we have to fight things with scripture, but you might know that there's something that keeps continuously coming up. And it's like, I think one thing is making sure that we're closing the door to any areas that the enemy can come in because let's just say if we're struggling with like pornography or something like that, well, like what are you looking at on Instagram mm -hmm. or how are you looking at women or how are you looking at men that already starts to, you know, bring those thoughts up and maybe something happened, maybe you were exposed to pornography or things you shouldn't have been exposed to when you were young and that might have started you know, things off. Um, Mm -hmm. whether it was intentional or what or whether you were a victim in the situation but it's really good to address like where this actual desire is coming from and um, just to share with you guys I know for myself that because I was struggling with cheating in a relationship and just in general sexual sin it was like this stronghold that would like pull me and and I still struggled with it when I started walking with the Lord and then I was like trying to figure out well, what is wrong with me? Why do I keep going back to these situations? Why can I not say no? Why am I like struggling with this temptation? And I realized that I just had this deep wounding from my past of so desperately wanting to be accepted mostly by males, by men. And the Lord had to deal with that with me and he had to heal my heart in that area so that I was no longer desiring that um, attention and that acceptance and it just making me feel like I was loved and that's what I was desiring. So instead of me, you know, just avoiding at all costs those situations and it being like behavioral modification, it's really important to give it to the Lord and he freed me from this like literally overnight. I thought that, oh my gosh, this is like some addiction that I have that I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to deal with and go to counseling forever or something. But the Lord, I gave it to him and he, he exposed to me the root of where it came from and he really helped me um, to heal from it very quickly. And as a lot of you might know, if you've ever been delivered from addictions or things like that, the Lord can take it away just like that. And that's what he did for me. So that's what I would encourage you guys as well um, is to just be open to journaling and praying to the Lord and asking him, you don't need to dig around for it, but asking him to reveal to you where is this desire coming from in the first place? Like, where was my, was there a perversion that came in when I was young that caused me to like see men this way or see women this way or be attracted to this type of person or, um, yeah, stuff like that. What my wife reminded me just now is the root and also, so she just described the root of it, but I want to talk to you about something else is, is when, when you want the Lord to, um, redeem you from something you have to fully give it to him you can't give it to him on the saturday but by the monday you take it back you understand what i'm saying you have to fully give it to him and i have an example so um i shared a little bit with this in the beginning of videos my battle was pornography uh, alcohol i could i knew when to stop drinking uh, drugs and never really got into it but pornography crippled me crippled me since i was like 13 years old uh, when I watched something um, but I, I remember getting introduced to it from a f me and my buddies who grew up in England so it's definitely a different lifestyle to North America and we went over to a, a friend's house and his dad um, in his computer room showed us pornography uh, it was like me and my buddies are standing there and he's like showing it like it was some natural thing but it was disgusting and and that's what triggered the steps or, or the, the sin to keep coming in from seeing them in images as a young age, right? And, but this is what I want to say to you is this, is I remember I, I had an iPad, you know, iPad is a couple of thousand, whatever, I don't know, a thousand bucks, I don't even know how much they cost anymore. But um, I used to watch it on that. And then I, I was like getting to a point where I was like, I'm done with this. And I would go like three months to five months and then I'd slip again. And then one day I got my iPad and I'm like, this is it and I went to the recycling depot and I just chucked it into the recycling and I just walked off and I left it there and that was the, the beginning of uh, God saying okay now you're serious or well, if you're gonna be serious I'm gonna be serious mm -hmm. and he just delivered me from it and I think the other thing that I'm just reminded of right now is that you also have to want your freedom badly enough that you're gonna 
take the steps to like walk away from that sin or at least like at least take a step you know how you take a step in faith it's like you have to take a step like what Adam said and like throwing out the iPad or you know whatever it is deleting your Instagram if that's gonna cause you to go into those areas mm -hmm. when you get to the point where you're just so sick of falling into it and you're so sick of the repercussions that happen obviously there's forgiveness and there's God's grace and everything but I know for both myself and Adam um, we didn't know each other at this time but when we looked back at this particular year and this particular time of our life we both really were struggling with the same type of sexual sin we both fell into it at the same time again not knowing each other and then we both experienced an attack of the enemy like an extreme sickness and I just knew at that point and Adam knew at that point which again is interesting because we didn't even know each other but when we look back we knew the exact timing and everything and we just got to a point where it's like I, I am not gonna as Adam said I'm not gonna give the enemy even one more day because I know that when I fall into that I'm not saying like oh you fall into sin now you're gonna get sick or something like that but I, I know by the way that it happened and I know that Adam knows by the way that it happened that it was a way that the enemy could come in and um, just yeah caught just come in and attack me basically and I just got to the point where I was like I'm not here for that anymore like I, I'm not willing to look at that stuff that I was looking at before engage in those in those things that I was doing before it's just it's not worth it and I'm just the temptation is just not even worth it so it's like flee from those things and it also says in the Bible that what if like your eye tempts you to sin then like gouge it out if your hand tempts you to sin then cut it off not literally but it's like yeah like if that thing tempts you to sin we'll throw out your iPod get rid of Instagram don't hang out with those people and just um, again my wife reminded me I forgot but she always reminds me is um, this is this is guys but also for girls is uh, we're very visual um, so for example I don't want to run through my Explorer page uh, if um, if I'm on TikTok, is I've restricted TikTok now. I can only send me certain things, and it's way better. But uh, don't play with fire because you're gonna get burned. And my wife would just describe. I had this sweater made, and on it it says "No more days." And what that meant is give the devil no more days. Don't even give him an hour. Don't even give him a minute. Don't even give him a second. Give him nothing because he deserves nothing. And don't don't mess with that. Like I, I'm so tired of hearing Christians like I'm, I'm gonna go out and do this today, or or, or I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to a concert and do and do that. Like no, like don't play with fire because you're gonna get burned. Like we, all we need is this. This is all we need. This is all our joy. This is all our hope. It's all our satisfaction. It's all, all everything we need. And I just, I'm just sick and tired. Like cause for me, I guess because I've played so much on the other side of the tracks. Like I've done everything. I've seen everything and it's like there's nothing there's absolutely nothing on the other side of the tracks that mm -hmm. comes remotely close to Jesus mm -hmm. and what he does for us and I'm just passionate about that and I'm trying to say most of you obviously experience the other side of the tracks but I just want to save you a lot of time and a lot of hurt and a lot of heartbreak is stay close to Jesus focus only on him and he will hold your hand and guide you to wherever you want to go mm -hmm. so that's um, anything else you want to add no that's really good I, I agree I can see like why Adam is passionate about that and I am as well and I don't want it to come across as like with obviously I'm sure you guys can tell we're not it's not to come across as like judgmental or like why are you doing that it's like just because we've both walked in it for so long that we can just so clearly see like just you know it's there's nothing good that comes of it and it's always it's always over promising and completely under delivering yeah, and it's like you don't words. you don't even you don't yeah just you're in a worse spot um and a quote i think this is in scripture as well but it's worded differently I'm, i'll find it but basically about like um a fool learns by experience but a wise person learns through counsel yeah i think that that's i'm gonna yeah, have to look yeah, up the scripture but there's also like it's returned yeah. to a quote as well i think um but yeah it's like you have to like you don't always have to go out and experience the stuff that we experience just to be able to say oh that wasn't a good idea because then we live with the the repercussions of it after um, but the other thing one of the last things I just wanted to say is like 
when you do end up in those situations, even if it's something so silly, like I'm not gonna probably fall into the same sin that I fell into before because I'm going, I'm going nowhere near that mm -hmm. line. But sin that I could fall into is snapping at my husband, being rude to him, or um, gossiping about someone, or like just saying something sharp. And then in that moment, at least I can catch myself because in my mind I'm like, I don't want to let, I don't want any room for the enemy to come in because I am fighting with my husband or being rude or whatever it is. So then immediately I have to be like, I mean, it might be in that moment or it might be an hour later, but I have to repent for that and be like, Lord, I'm sorry that I disrespected my husband, yelled at this person, was rude about this, whatever it is, um, you know, rather than just like leaving that open for the enemy. Well, she doesn't do that, but just, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, for me to you is, um, we want to continue to make videos more like this and like I said I don't I don't want us to be on the surface we want to go deep uh, because we want to help and please if you felt led uh, to support my wife uh, in many different ways uh, her patreon uh, is number one uh, her coaching as well book a, book a, book a session with her and um, yeah if you felt led pray on it because we, we want to be here to share the truth in a, in a way that's obviously not flattering for us but that's okay um, because all glory goes to him thank you guys so much and we will see you next week yeah see you guys bye